Well, I know it's only May, but I'm looking right at you, Academy. I think you have a shoe in for best animated feature. Take some notes. Guys, welcome back to yet another brand new movie review, and as always, I thank you all so much for stopping by, and I hope you enjoy your stay. This time around, we're hopping onto Netflix to check out The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Yes, it's the brand new Sony animated feature, which a lot of my fellow YouTube cinephiles have been calling the best film of 2021 so far. Again, I know it's only May, but... Let's dig in and find out for ourselves, shall we? This film follows young Katie Mitchell, and she embarks on a road trip with her proud parents played by Danny McBride and Maya Rudolph at their funniest, and they're gonna go drop her off at her school to start her first year of college. But their plans to bond as a family soon get interrupted when the world's electronic devices come to life to stage an uprising. With help from two friendly robots defective against the evil plan, the Mitchells must now come together to save one another and the world from the new technological revolution. So guys, I've been hearing so much positive hype surrounding this film simply because Phil Lord and Christopher Miller were attached as producers. And let me just tell you, when they swing for the fences, they hardly miss. Guys, long story short, I think they might have hit another home run. I'm with the consensus on this. I loves the Mitchells versus the Machines so much. And I think it's very likely that this will be found on most YouTube cinephiles best of the year lists and for very good reason. Because this film and its premise is so unique and so different from anything else you'll see probably all year long. And it's so damn fun to watch. One of the biggest praises I can give this movie right off the bat is the gorgeous and vibrant animation which should be a given because just look at how colorful and fun this movie looks. The animators free killed it here. Now, if anybody watching is a fan of Into the Spider-Verse, well, you're in luck because there's a lot of similar stylistic choices that are thrown into the Mitchells versus the Machines here. Similar to Into the Spider-Verse, this animation is so energetic. It's almost like the animation itself is a frenzied character of its own. Beneath this surface is an absolutely brilliant story and premise. Every storyboard seemed to have been dripping with pure intelligence. This movie is extremely self-aware of itself, too. And that's not simply because it makes a lot of references to the sub-genre as our main hero is a film major, but this film ultimately gives us an incredible message that is so prevalent to what we've been going through over the past couple of years. Because we're all glued to our cell phones, we're all glued to our TV set, and sometimes to reach our ultimate goals, we have to connect to the human experience. There's a reason why this film was called Connected at one point. And side note, I'm glad that the title was switched out from this because it just sounds so much cooler now. And of course, being a family animated film, this movie does set up a bevy of colorful characters along the way, including our heroes, the Mitchell family, a family of dorks. And God damn it, we all love them for it. And our hero, Katie, is a film buff with a YouTube channel. God, that just feels so relatable in so many ways, but I just can't really put my finger on as to why. The father, voiced by Danny McBride, is equally hilarious and geeky in a bevy of ways. He thinks he's like the heavy set James Bond, but he ends up being scared of half the sh he encounters. He's just so much fun to watch. And he also brings us the Rick Mitchell special. When you know, you know. And I dare not spoil for you who the villain of this movie is, but I couldn't believe how much I understood why this villain feels the way they feel and their evil plan and why they're executing it. I can't believe I'm saying this. It all makes so much sense. And the way they execute said evil plan in certain sequences was really, really neat. It almost felt like a horror movie. I thought it was so awesome. Made the movie all the better for it. Now, speaking of awesome, I also have to talk about these two defective robots who both want the name Eric. These are super fun side characters to watch in their own rights. There's one scene where they try to convince our heroes so desperately that they're human and... <laughs> like, I felt bad that I was laughing at them, but... <laughs> Good lord. And this movie also has one of the most adorable loafs of dog you'll ever see. Yeah, quite the chonkster, isn't he? I guarantee you, there's gonna be tens of thousands of memes of this little guy all over Twitter by the end of the year. Now, there's two other characters that I've neglected to mention by this point, and this is actually kind of where my issues with the Mitchells vs. Machine begin. And this is really, really getting into nitpicks at this point, guys. The mother, voiced by Maya Rudolph, is a very sweet mom who can be a total badass, especially towards the end of this film. But my problem is the extent of her character. It's basically whenever a family member does something good, 
Give them a gold star. Same thing with the son, Aaron. He's a huge fan of dinosaurs, knows a lot about them. That's his character. Basically, I was wanting a little bit more development out of these two characters than we actually got. Because the big emotional brunt of this movie is carried by that father-daughter connection. All mainly told through the lens of the daughter. Kind of apples and oranges here, but this is actually the same issue I had with the first Incredibles movie, even though that's one of my favorite Pixar films. I just didn't think there was enough balance between all of the family members in the development department. I mean, it's not called Katie and the Mitchells versus the Machines. It's called the Mitchells versus the Machines, as in all of them. So shouldn't they all be the focus then? Again, guys, keep in mind this is all constructive criticism, and this is just my little nitpicks I had with it. One other tiny nitpick. I thought there were a few specific plot elements that were too oddly specific, and it made things a little bit too convenient. Like, there's certain elements that come in, and they're almost like R2 in The Force Awakens, saying, hey, I can help, without giving too much away, they take a very similar approach in the Mitchells versus the Machines. All basically in terms of how these characters fix their problems and confront their obstacles. And all of that in hindsight just felt a little bit forced to me. Regardless of these teensy little nitpicks, guys, I... What else is there to say? I really did love this movie. Please go watch this when you can. I think this is bound to be one of 2021's best animated films. All to go along with one of the sweetest endings of the entire year that's going to be really, really hard to top. I'm going to give The Mitchells vs. The Machines an A. Definitely color me surprised, guys. I was not expecting to love this one as much as I did. If nothing else this weekend, please, everybody, I implore you. Please, please, please go watch this movie on Netflix. You will not regret it. This is all just my opinion. What did you guys think of the Mitchells versus the Machines? Did you love it as much as I did? Did you not like it? Do you guys think this will win Best Animated Feature at the Oscars? Do you think something else like Raya and the Last Dragon will take it home? As you guys know, I love making these videos for you guys, and I love starting the discussion about cinema and all things entertainment. So let's all continue the discussion down in the comments, shall we? And hey, if this is your first time visiting the channel today, if you guys feel like these are topics you'd be interested in discussing with me, if I were you, I'd definitely consider hitting that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can. Just go ahead and smash it as much as you like. It is free, first off. It would really, really help out the channel if you did so. And I'll tell you what, if you guys subscribe, you'll be the first ones to know anytime a new upload hits the channel. And just one last reminder, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up on your way out. That would be awesome. And as always, look out for more exciting content hitting my channel very, very soon on the regular. You guys are the best. And with all that being said, back talk, commence.